So I'm going to ask Peter to say a couple of words just to close the conference. Um, before he does, I'm going to say a couple of words to close the conference, which is just to say a huge load of thank yous to everybody that has made today uh, so great. Uh, our last three speakers, all the speakers throughout the day, all the Red Army volunteers who have given their time freely last night in the weeks uh, and months running up to this, uh, and when you all get up and leave, they'll still be tidying up. Um, the organising committee, which uh, have put in Trojan work, uh, where, where are they now? Simon, Colm, John, Shauna, Susan, Dean McCarthy, who can't be with us today, uh, and hundreds of others uh, in, uh, in one form or another have, have given up huge amounts of time to make today work. I'm very grateful to all of them. Uh, and they deserve every, every, every bit of that applause. And, and all our speakers and our, our, our NAS and DFB colleagues who've uh, given up their time to be here today as well, they're not being paid either, so uh, thank you very much. Um, in terms of uh, where we go from here, I'm going to ask Peter Denny just to say a few words, uh, and then we have the Jeff King Award and also a few quick raffle prizes to give out. We'll try and be quick to get you all on the road. Uh, to have a safe journey home as soon as possible. We will do this again next year. We're mad. Uh, so we'll see you back in 2017. Thanks. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I suppose from uh, a personal point of view, I, I've been absolutely blown away by the presentations today and, and the numbers of you that have come so, from all over Ireland to be here. Uh, this is the first conference I've been at. I've only been appointed in the last year or so. So uh, I suppose I have to start off by saying to you that I have never seen uh, so many people who've come from so many different backgrounds having a, a common interest in uh, com contributing to the community in such a positive way. Uh, and from that point of view, ever since I have joined the organisation, which was just last July, uh, I have heard lots of things about all of the areas that uh, are governed by the regulator that's called FEC, the, the Pre-Hospital Emergency Care Council. Uh, but the most, uh, the, the most talked about group of people are the community first responders. And the, it's, it's not so much that of all of the effort that you're putting in, because we don't see all of that on a day by day, evening by evening basis. But we know what it is that you can do and the impact of what your uh, work is on the community that you serve, wherever you are in the country. And, and that's the critical part of it from our point of view. Um, on a personal basis, many, many years ago, I was involved in the civil offence, and so I know what um, CFR, CFP can do for you in the context of uh, saving life. Uh, many, on those years, it was a 5-2 type uh, um, exercise. So from that point of view, I suppose it wasn't uh, as good as what it is you're doing, and we didn't have the same success that you're having uh, and, and regularly having right now. Uh, and uh, there's an awful lot of water under the bridge since those days, and obviously uh, the sci science has brought it an awful long way. Uh, if you were to take it in the context of the role that community first responders can play in the, in, in, in the world that we live in, uh, the first thing from my point of view is that it's related to a series of processes that are in the health sector and in the pre-hospital emergency care environment in particular. And processes by their nature are made up of chains. And chains have links. And we're really talking about a chain being as strong as as weak as linked when we're looking at what it is we can do for people who have a problem uh, in the uh, environment that we operate in. And from that point of view, uh, and it's been spoken about here many, many times today uh, by many different people from all sorts of backgrounds, that the chain of survival is probably the most important aspect of the world that we live in in the pre-hospital emergency care environment. And Brian, uh, uh, Brian Parr on there has told me, since I've come in the door, uh, that the worst insult that can happen to any person is that they can have a cardiac arrest. Uh, and in, it's in that environment and it's in that specific instance that this group of people can help people most and can keep people alive. And the statistics are frightening when you come to it. And, and it was mentioned also here this morning quite early that the OCAR um, report, which was published for 2014, identified that there was 1,984 cardiac arrests uh, that were responded to uh, in, uh, in 2014. And out of that, only 6.6% of the people survived. That's 131 people out of 1,984. And it doesn't matter really uh, how good an ambulance service we have. And we have fantastic people in the ambulance service, and we have a fantastic ambulance service compared to 
lots of other countries throughout Europe. And those people work extremely hard and they are highly qualified, highly trained, highly experienced. But that chain uh, is as strong as its weakest link. And that chain has a number of links that are critical. And there are five links in the chain that we were talking about earlier this morning. And if you were to look at it from their point of view, from the National Ambulance Service provider's point of view, uh, of the five links, the first three links are not in their control. The first three links are in your control. And that is the vital difference in terms of how you manage all of this. Uh, the early access, that's something I suppose that we have to deal with in the context of uh, more proactive uh, uh, communications with everybody to ensure that they dial uh, the emergency numbers in, 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 in as early as possible. But the second and the third links the ti are time critical and that's to do with CPR within four minutes and defibrillation within eight minutes. Uh, these are the areas that you've trained for, these are the areas that you contribute in. And in the context of the outcomes and the changes in, and the improvements that you can make from in the context of going from 6.6% as was stated this morning uh, to uh, uh, upwards of 50%. Look at the numbers of lives that will be saved by the work that will be carried out by community for first responders. So from that point of view we are looking at tremendous opportunities to save life. In a previous life I was involved in the setting up of the Road Safety Authority and the amount of uh, I suppose effort and energy that was put into reducing the numbers of deaths in our road was Trojan back in 2006 and it has, getting, it has been acknowledged throughout the country and throughout Europe of how much of an improvement has been. But that improvement, no matter how big it has been in the road safety world, is minuscule compared to the improvement that can be brought about by the work of the community first responders nationwide. So it is vital that we put so much effort and so much energy into increasing the work that community first responder groups do. And being linked is probably the key to it. And the key element of it is that link that, we, that was so well described to us over the last few presentations. That is why there has to be a, a relationship, a strong relationship between the community first responders uh, group and the National Ambulance Service and why we will support all of that. I suppose from our point of view, uh, in, as, as the regulator involved in this space, uh, we support the work and we need you to understand and know that as a regulator, and we, we play a very small part, a very small part in, in all of this, that we 100% support everything that you do and we were available to you whenever it is that you need the support that we can provide. We are, as you're probably aware, involved in updating the CFR materials uh, for the 2015 guidelines and that's progressing presently by Brian and his team. And we will ensure that they are out before the end of this year, hopefully during quarter three. Um, we are, I suppose, encouraged and particularly pleased by the numbers of you that are here today and by the increase in the numbers over last year and I've been told that there's been a 30% increase in the numbers from last year's conference uh, and the enthusiasm with which you take part in all of the work that was going on out there all day today was absolute evidence of how, uh, how encouraged you are and how dedicated and how passionate you are about what it is you do every day. We want to ensure that we support you in every way that we can on behalf of the state and on behalf of uh, the National Ambulance Service and on behalf of all of the players, most especially on behalf of yourselves. So if you think that there's something that we need to be doing that we're not doing, we would like to hear from you uh, in any way that you can communicate with us. And you have our website, you have our Facebook uh, sites, you have a number of ways of contacting us. I suppose finally, on behalf of the team that, that's here from FEC today, I would just like to congratulate you on the success of the event and on the success of your work to date. And we hope that the years ahead, you will have great opportunities to improve those OCAR statistics. Uh, there is great opportunity to do it, and you have fantastic training, fantastic skills. And going back to my own earlier days in this many, many years ago, the improvement in the outcomes these days from the kind of training and the types of methods that you use today compared with what we used all those years ago is astounding. So there is nothing but gain to be made from uh, what it is you do. And I hope that we can help to, to support you, that we can help to contribute to the, uh, I suppose, the, making the public and the, the whole nation made more aware of what it is that you do and how it can contribute to the uh, success of those 
terrible statistics that are there right now. And if you're my age, I suppose, you get a little more concerned about people being able to uh, resuscitate you if anything happens to you. So from my point of view and from my colleagues uh, that are here today from FEC, we really wish you all of the success that we can possibly have in the year ahead. We hope to see you next year at your next year's conference, and we look forward to supporting it as we have in recent years. And the very best of luck in supporting all of the colleagues that you support back home, wherever you've come from throughout the country. Good luck and thank you very much. Thanks, Peter. And Peter's lucky he's the only man who doesn't have to take any questions after his two words. Um, last year we did uh, something new. We, we had an award uh, in memory of uh, Peter's predecessor, Jeff King, uh, who was the director of FEC, and, and we felt blazed a little bit of a trail for CFRs. Uh, and the purpose of that award was to acknowledge somebody who went the extra mile in strengthening the chain of survival in their community, who went a bit above and beyond the call of duty. Uh, and last year, we awarded the first award to Jeff posthumously. Uh, so we're going to award it again this year. We put out a call for nominations and appointed a panel uh, of independent people. Uh, Shane Mooney of NAS and the RFU, uh, Maureen Kelly from the SADS and the Irish Heart Foundation, uh, and Jacqueline Egan from FEC to adjudicate on those uh, independently. Uh, so Shane's going to come up and say a few words uh, before we present the award. <coughs> Thanks, David. Um, not going to be too long. Uh, I think any of you who, who had the opportunity and pleasure of meeting Jeff will realise such a, um, a wonderful guy that he was and how he had uh, a massive impact in pre-hospital care uh, in Ireland over his time. Uh, and as, as a country uh, and as a group of professionals and responders, we are at a loss of them. Um, I think a, a very fitting award is the Jeff King Award. Um, as Dave said, myself and, and Jacqueline and Maureen were asked to uh, look at all the nominees and to sort of um, um, to come up with a, uh, a deserving uh, winner of that. Just before we announce that, uh, Roisin, who is Jeff's daughter, is just going to uh, come and talk to us for a couple of minutes and then we'll announce the winner. Thanks. Uh, hi everyone, my name is Roisin King and Jeff King was my dad. Um, I just feel incredibly honoured to be here to present this award today on behalf of my dad. Um, I inherited a passion for the community first response from him um, which really developed particularly three years ago when he started me off getting me involved in all of this great initiative. Um, my dad recognised and was extremely committed to the importance of all levels of pre-hospital care, especially grassroots response in the community. I know that he would have been thrilled to see such enthusiasm and dedication from all here today. So thank you very much, everyone. Thank you. Thanks, thanks Roisin for that. So uh, we had uh, um, a large amount of nominees from a large amount of responder groups all around the country. One thing that the, the three judges uh, and we debated and went back and forth on this several times is that every one of them were deserving of an award. There's no doubt that everybody who was nominated by their groups or by individuals were deserving of recognition. We've only got one award. It's a pity we didn't have 40 or 50 awards. Uh, each of the people who were nominated were undoubtedly champions of their CFO group in their community and each one of them went the extra mile. However, there had to be one person. Uh, the one person that we all agreed on relatively early on in this programme was John Fitzgerald.
Um, I, this, there's words that I can't say because I'm being filmed. Um, I met Jeff, um, we, we met Jeff with Wicklow and Susan and I, we, we interact with Jeff a good bit and um, he was a huge supporter of our CFRs and he used to say some stuff to us and any time we'd meet him, he'd always he'd say how are you getting on, how, how are things going in Wicklow and um, you know, he used to say, you guys are great, uh, keep it going, keep it going. There's another thing he used to say and uh, I was involved with him with Nace Rudby, he was a, a minis coach as I was as well and we were trying to get a scheme going, a first aid system going in, in the rugby club. And then Shane started safe rugby in, in Ireland, in the IRFU, and that means we didn't have to do anything. So, but anyhow, um, he used, we used to drag him along to all, the, all the, the information nights and safety and whatever we were doing in the club. But he used to say to it, every night he, used to, he had the same thing that he used to say. And what he said was, what you do in the first five minutes of a cardiac arrest is better than teams of cardiologists do in the second five minutes. And that's pretty powerful because you have the minimum level of training or you're using your, uh, your hands and an AED if you have one. And that's pretty powerful. You have a pretty, you're a pretty powerful source. And like I said earlier, he used to say, you guys are great. And um, can I say on his behalf, you guys are great. To be fair to John, he, he said that uh, in the event that he was nominated, he didn't want it, so we had to pull a little fast one to uh, get him close to the stage unaware. So uh, thanks, John, and thanks, Roshan, for your lovely words. We're going to draw some raffle prizes and get you out the door. First of all, uh, Lisa Kelly, you win your bank card back. <laughs> and if you're not here, I'll take it. Oh, okay. Um, secondly... Uh, there were two CPR competitions on outside, NAS were running one, uh, and the winner of NAS, who wins the CR Plus AED trainer, is Breed Award, with 100% of her compressions correct. Um, I think it's over there with uh, Colin. Behind you, Colin. Hmm? What group do you represent? <laughs> do you represent a group? HSE. HSE, you're going to start a CFR group, <laughs> safe to say. Um, so come give it there. Um, we don't have all the prizes on stage, so um, we've, uh, we'll, uh, if you come up to me afterwards when your name is called, we'll allocate them to you. Se second place, and that was Liam Clark, who wins uh, uh, a whole pile of uh, CPR face masks. The Zal Challenge outside, and something that seems like a fix, uh, was won again by Keith O'Brien from Greystones. <laughs> So either he's really good at CPR or there's something fishy going on, but I think he's actually really good at CPR. Uh, and that's not bad after suffering a cardiac arrest on stage this morning. Um, second place was Helen Heron. And third place was Sarah Breen. Right. I think I have 10 prizes to draw out here. Would someone like to come up and pull them out? Gavin, you're looking fabulous. These prizes aren't in any particular order. Prize number one is the Heart Sign Samaritan 500P AED. Um, kindly donated by Heart Safety Solutions. And that prize is for Liz Matimo. <laughs> you had to be here. I'm sorry. Brian O'Byrne. Oh, Jesus, lads. Oh, point this is to keep you here. Third time lucky. If this doesn't work, I'm taking it. Okay. Alice Carey. Hey! Okay. Okay, ne next prize I'm drawing is... I'm gonna, Anne, I'm going to keep going because I've, I've loads to get through, Anne. Anne, hello? <laughs> Uh, we, do the, we do the photos at the end because we'll hold you to get through. Uh, second, next prize is for a fully kitted uh, responder kit bag from uh, SP Services, Anne-Marie Hayes. Okay. 
Next prize is a fully kitted uh, responder kit bag from Flashpoint Systems, and that's for Mairead McMeal. Is Mairead here? Mairead McMeal, are you here? No? Sorry, you lose. Uh, Martin Keenan? Yeah, you win. Uh, um, Cardiac Services have donated a Little Annie Resuscitation Mannequin, and the winner of that is Tomas Barry. <laughs> Unless he's not here. Oh, he is here. Excellent. Uh, after that, uh, Flashpoint Services have also donated a Resuscitation Mannequin and AED Trainer, which has been won by Joan McAdam. <laughs> if she's here. Is she here? She's not here. Sorry. I'm with the rules. Dylan Wright. Dylan? <laughs> Katharina Murray? Lads, you've all gone home early. <laughs> oh, you're in work on Monday. <laughs> Rory Conlon? Hey! Okay. That's for the Flashpoint mannequin. The Flashpoint mannequin. Mannequin and trainer. I have them all on the list here. Okay, this one is for a 100 euro voucher for H&S Publishing. Um, Warren Stott. Okay, lovely. Thank you, Warren. Uh, and a scary CFRs and a very chivalrous uh, move have donated a choking trainer, and that goes to Anne O'Donovan. She's gone. They'll stay next year. They will stay next year. She goes to Shane Doyle. Audrey Matthews. Hey. We have a second choking trainer, courtesy of Airmed Services, and that's been won by Sharon Stoney. And I think this is our last one, which is a 250 euro voucher to spend on the Safety Ireland shop, and that's been won by Lindsay Collins. She is here. Excellent. So if you uh, haven't won up your prize, come up to a passwords and we will uh, just sort out some contact details and get them to you. And I have absolutely nothing else to say except thanks a million. If you're staying, have fun. If you're not, have a safe trip home.